What's up, everybody? Calvin Bowie, aka Captain Charisma. You didn't know my name, did you? I'm sitting with my girl. That's why you say your name. Tracy from <laughs> Me Lai Kitchen. That's right. Me Lai is in. Are we in Venice? Are we in LA? Where are we right now? We're in Mar Vista. Mar Vista. Yeah, tiny little neighborhood, sort of uh, right next to uh, Venice adjacent. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we are. How far from Venice Beach are you? Uh, we're, what, a mile, a mile and a half? Okay, Just so keep going west down Venice Boulevard. And west is that way? That way. Okay, got it. Yeah. You guys watch it, right? Just that way. That way. Venice Boulevard is where we sit on, and you go. Left. Okay. West. You can smell the, that, that briny sea breeze in the air. You have a really nice patio and we're hanging out. What's cool about this place, it is three, it is one building with three businesses and they all sit side by side. Yeah. Now, are they all your friends? Uh, they are all my friends. You can uh, say no, you can lie. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Well, the, the MV Grab and Go, we don't know them as well. We've gotten to know them throughout the year and a half. Okay. Um, they're wonderful. He's a chef. Um, he was actually on Chopped. I think he won his Chopped competition a few times. His name is Brandon Walker. Um, the coffee shop next door is Mavro Cafe, owned by uh, Nikos Mavro Michalas. Um, very, very bright, super sweet, um, super smart young guy. Um, he's actually only 21. And, oh, I, remember um, those, I remember those days when I was 21. Yeah, me, oh, me too. So, uh, yes, they're all, they're, we're all friends. We all share a patio together. And uh, it's, been, it's been a good business for the last year and a half that we've been sitting here. Well, good. Mi Lai, the name of the restaurant, M-Y-L-A-I, is located again on Venice and... So, Centen between Centinella and Grandview Boulevard. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 I mean, what she said. I didn't mean that in that <laughs> perspective. Um, yeah. Mi Lai is modern Vietnamese, and mm -hmm. most of you guys know that I spent the last 12 years in Vietnam being Vietnamese myself as a chef. Uh, I actually started my career at the starting of all Vietnamese food, Slanted Door. And wow. uh, yeah, and I, I didn't know I, that. I, I, I don't tell many people about that. Wow. So, well, that's Vin a fancy Vietnamese <laughs> food foods is pretty much what my MO is, even though I don't make tacos now that are more that are really Korean based. Uh, Vietnamese food is what I eat all the time. For the last 12 years and pretty much all my life, this is what I eat. So we came here, we got four dishes. Uh, I'm shooing away our little friends here who want to <laughs> hang out because they want to be on camera, but they can't. Uh, we got three dishes, we got four dishes. Why don't we turn the camera around, show the camera, why don't, wow. <laughs> why don't we turn the camera around, show you what we're working with, and then uh, we'll start eating. We'll talk about a little bit about entrepreneurship about what it's like to own your first restaurant, yes. some of the hardships you've gone through, uh, why Vietnamese food, besides the fact that you're Vietnamese and you love the freshness and the textures and the flavors yes. and everything else. But uh, enough talking, let's turn it around. We got four dishes to show you. And uh, grab, this yeah, grab that, I'll, gra I'll grab this. Oh my God, my back. Oh, one, two, three. All right, here we go. So let's start off with the banh mi first, and then you can we'll go this way, and you tell me what everything is, okay? Okay, so the banh mi, it's a banh mi pork, so um, it's uh, tit nung, otherwise, AKA, right? Inside, uh, I don't wanna touch it, but inside there's the pork. You can touch anything. Okay, I have, okay. I don't mind So there's the germs. pork inside, then of course we have the pickled carrots and daikon, jalapeno and cilantro. Good. Um, this bread is baked by Kadoro Bakery. They bake our banh mi for us uh, fresh every single day, fresh and delivered. So um, every day, you, uh, if you come into Me Like Kitchen, you will have fresh bread baked that day. How'd it go? Um, over here, we have tofu bites. Um, uh, it's a little spicy. I season it with a little bit of a uh, sriracha powder, um, and it goes really well with our cilantro ginger sauce. Uh, this is made in house, of course. Everything that you get in Me Like Kitchen is made uh, fresh in house. So um, we we don't, you know, everything is made fresh. We don't uh, buy things uh, and unfreeze it, uh, open bottles or anything like that. Um, next over here we have a buntit nunch aza, or in English, pork, uh, grilled pork with pork egg rolls. Um, and then inside this is vermicelli. Underneath there's a bed of salad, cilantro, crispy onion, cucumbers, again, pickled carrots and daikon, very Vietnamese uh, pickled dish, and bean sprouts. And then lastly, we have the our signature bowl. Um, I call it the Mama Mai's. Mai is actually uh, my mother's name. 
So uh, inside we have garlic rice. That is a signature Mi Lai dish. Um, I came up with this all on my own, all in my own kitchen. Super proud of you. Uh, carrots and daikon again, pickled cabbage. So in you know Vietnamese cuisine, we have pickled cabbage, but I decided to use red cabbage to give it that color. Um, tomatoes, cucumber for freshness, cilantro, crispy onion, and of course our grilled chicken. Um, so though these are sort of the, you know, the most popular dishes of My Lai, um, unless you want to build your own bowl. So, okay. Yeah. So let's let's sit down. Okay. Oh my God, my back. I'm getting so old for this. I don't know why I keep doing this. <laughs> All right, let's pull the camera down a little bit okay. so you guys can see us eat. My head's like chopped off. All right. Um, I'm gonna start off with the garlic rice bowl and yeah. I'll work my way around. Uh, so pickled cabbage is not something that, that you see ever. You see pickled mustard greens, you see mm -hmm. yudua, but mm -hmm. you don't ever see pickled cabbage. And the fact that she used uh, red cabbage, it brings a really nice brightness to the dish. Mm -hmm. um, fried shallots is like my jam. I put fried shallots on every single thing I cook. Me too. Uh, I put it on my tacos for the extra crunch and the yeah. extra... Uh, umami. Umami. Yeah. All right. Um, you started this as your as your first restaurant. I'm, sh I'm sure this isn't your first occupation. This is your yeah. Um, so I have been in corporate America for about twenty years. But she was three. Yeah, <laughs> I know I don't look it, but yeah, no, I'm just you, you look really young. <laughs> um, I am uh, not that young, so I've been in corporate America working for about twenty years. I work for um, lots of big companies, actually Bear Stearns, Live Nation Entertainment. I was at Bear Stearns. You were. Yeah. But this was uh, out of college, 2000, in New York. I was 2004 when I started. Really? Yeah. In, in New York? In Manhattan. Really? Yes. Uh, private client services, PCS. Uh, I was on the derivative trading floor. Well, then now yeah. we are like two peas in a pod, you <laughs> and I. Look at that. I who know. Knew? And who would have knew, right? I mean, we got. I, I filmed at a restaurant called Row Fusion just... Uh, yesterday. 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 And um, she saw it on Instagram. She said, hey, I, I want you to co-host, or I, I want to co-host a video with you at my restaurant. And I said, yeah, I'm yeah. totally down. Although I was an hour late, I'm sorry. <laughs> no I'm, I'm going to put it out there for everybody to see. I was an hour late, and I, and I do uh, apologize for that. So for someone being from Manhattan, you should know to be on time, right? Oh, yeah, no, no. By, by all means. <laughs> I, have, I have zero excuse. Of being late today, I'm just uh, kidding. and 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 I will not let that happen again. Okay, kidding, kidding. Okay. Yeah. So then you Live Nation, okay? Uh, Live Nation afterwards, and then uh, I started working in a tech company, and you know I just never felt um, uh, fulfilled. I guess for I know so, I had so many years. When did you not feel fulfillment? You know what? I just kept what thinking. You know, mm. I, this might sound super um, asshole. -y. Go ahead. But I asshole. just felt like I was destined for bigger things. What's wrong with that? Why, why do people not want success in their life? Are they scared to see what it may, it, what may happen if they got success? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I just didn't want to sound like an asshole to say that. But I really did, did feel like I was, you know, destined for bigger things. And I just wanted to have a business where I was working for myself. You know, I worked long hours at all these companies and um you made a lot of people rich yeah but you I, also learned a lot of fundamentals right? i did you I got did. the basics down yeah one yeah one who wants to just jump into entrepreneurship and own a restaurant you're going to realize there's sacrifices that you never thought would come up absolutely yep so i would say some of the fundamentals that i learned very quickly are um the fact that you know a lot of your business is actually controlled just uh, on spreadsheets, right? On spreadsheets. Every, everything is based on number. Oh, people lie, numbers don't. Yep. And it's, exactly. It's up to you to be as honest as you can to see whether or not yeah. your business is healthy. Yeah. Or it's it's hurting right now. Exactly. Okay. So you know, I can come in. I come into my restaurant every single day. I serve customers, and every single day we have a line out the door. We have tons of customers in. But the true, you know, the ultimate test is when I go home and I look at that P and L. So, if and also look at the costs. So I think we mm. we kind of touched uh, on that a little bit earlier. But um, that is business one hundred and one right there. If you don't know that, that is what you should know. <laughs> if you don't know that, and you think that getting into this industry is going to be 
as glamorous as Hollywood wants to, what you mm. think it is. Not glamorous at all, by the way. No. Um, <laughs> go to a, go to a restaurant. You know, I'm, I went to culinary school after I went to after, after I was a banker. I went to school later in my life and started my career later in my life. Um, but with as many opportunities as we have now in 2021 versus mm -hmm. what we had in 2003. Yeah. It's a time ago. Um, <laughs> if, if somebody was hungry to learn yeah. and said, Tracy, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be a manager. Just want to work. Yeah. Can you, and I got heart. I'm going to show up half an hour early. I'm going to leave. I'm the last person to leave. I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to, I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm going to learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to take that person on and teach that person? Or would you be able to share what you know and grow that person into who he or she wants to be? Yeah. I love that you asked that question because, um, you know, growing up or working, right? Working at a young age, 21, getting out of college uh, at the Bear Stearns and the Live Nations of the world. Mm -hmm. um, being, you know, a female, being Asian, uh, you have to work very hard to get looked at and to get promoted. And there's been many times where I felt like uh, I was due for a promotion and I didn't get it. And, um, you know, I really had to start, I had to start understanding who I was and how to get myself noticed. And that was, and, and to force myself to speak up. Luckily, I don't have a problem of speaking up or being all that shy, but you know, you, you do, it is something that as you get older, you, you learn. So when I started my own business, this is the easiest interview I've ever done. <laughs> I've, I've literally said nothing, but looked at her and said, okay, continue on. Yeah. You're, you're going really good here. Oh, I can. You're, I can you're really good. Go <laughs> so uh, as I, when I started my own business, I thought to myself, I never want to be that person that, you know, um, when someone comes in, they don't have experience that I do, I say, you know what, I'm sorry, but you don't have experience where I'm not gonna take you. That's right. So as long as I, I'm gonna tell you, this is a hard job, it's very stressful, blah, 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 blah. Can you do it, do you wanna do it? Yes, you wanna do it, I'm gonna take you on. I actually have, um, actually two of some, two of the people that I, that I have working on tonight, I am their first job. So I actually really do live this. So I am their first job. I'm teaching them everything. One of the one of the girls actually, we didn't Sorry, think so she was. We didn't think she just, was gonna make it. Oh really? Yeah. The one who just came out right now? No, no, uh, not, we, not we, her. We, we won't call her out on camera. <laughs> Go ahead, and tell me who she, it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's coming in later at five o'clock. Okay. Well, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, you know what? Like after uh, a month, we, and I was really about to fire her. Mm. After a month, now she's a rock star in there. She is a rock star. She's doing so great. And um, my very first manager, she started me since uh, from the beginning. She's, she's not here anymore because she moved far away. But um, I, she'd never managed before. She'd never been a manager. And I taught her what I wanted from her, how I thought, you know, uh, she should be as a manager. Um, and, you know, I myself don't really know, right? I just, I just have common sense, which I'm lucky to have because not many people have no. common sense. No, they don't. You, know, you can. So. Okay. Um, one thing that I think I learned in my later part of my career was. Oh. Uh oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, one thing I heard a lot in my twenties was, you gotta know your self worth. Yeah. You gotta know what you're worth and what your and what your values are. Yeah. We can say our values are family and health and all that mumbo jumbo, but. What do you, what really drives you, you know? And, and, and when you know your self-worth, mm -hmm. when you walk into an establishment, whatever business it is, you don't say, oh, hey, I'm asking for this, this pay scale, uh, pay me. Mm -hmm. It is taking a step back, understanding what they do, yeah. asking questions and saying, okay, is this for me? Is, is this going to make my journey go in that direction that I want it to go right. to? Because it has to be a two-way street between yeah. employer and employee. Mm -hmm. right? If I want to be a dishwasher, I'm my, me lie. I got to make sure that that's going to get me to where I want to be at later on in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you always have to ask those questions. And so um, your self-worth, when you define it, also, you know, it has to exude that. You have to exude that confidence. And you also have to show it, right, by working hard. I, you know... A lot of 
people these days, a lot of the kids these days, I these find kids that all want the, here we participation go. awards. Oh, here we but go. But we're not, you know, as 40 year olds, mm -hmm. you, we didn't work, we didn't grow up and work, and, and, and work hard to get particip participation awards. You never got. We worked hard. <laughs> That's You it. didn't get an award to show up. <laughs> That's right. You had a place first, second, or third, or you're going to come home empty handed. That's right. Simple as that, right? That's okay. right. Um, Kids these days, and we can say that, right? Uh, Kids can. these days, they want everything so quickly. Yeah. Everybody wants to be the chef. Everybody wants to be the top dog yes. or dogette. If, yes. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. I've been in Asia <laughs> for 12 years. Everybody's yeah. a dog. Um, oh, no, no, not that, not that. I was about to say. Not that way, not that way. No, like, like, no, 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 not, not, not like, you're like, like a dog, like, like you're cheating. It was just like top dog, like yeah. top person. Or top bitch. Top bitch. There, the, thank you. Being over 40. I'm the head bitch in charge. And I am the I, I am the big dog in town. Um being called chef yeah. comes with a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It is not writing a few words on a piece of paper makes yeah. me a chef. Yeah. For Absolutely. me, you know, at, at this point in my career, being a chef is teaching every bit of my craft to all of my team. Yeah. So that they can become who they want to become. Yeah. And that, and only then, when yeah. I can be able to teach what I know, can I be call my, can they call me a chef? Yeah. Other than that, it's just, hey you or Calvin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants to be a business owner. Yeah. Right. They want to, they, they want to say, oh, I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm a CEO. <laughs> that doesn't mean jack shit. If you have no money in the bank. Yeah. You can, you can, you can be CEO, whatever the fuck you want. But until you are, until you have scalability, until you are making any fucking money, fuck off. Yeah. I, I use fuck a lot. Well, you so. know, there's a lot of CE, CE fucking O's out there CE these fucking days. Those days. <laughs> Everybody I've met the last two months, I'm a CEO. Yeah. Of what? I don't even say, I would never call myself a CEO. No. Because what am I? I'm Just, a business owner. I have I'm a business, business that's it. person. Right? I'm a business <laughs> I'm man. I'm a business you're, person. You're, you're yeah. a business woman. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a board of directors, which therefore, I yeah. can't be a CEO. Because I don't have my, my BO. Stop <laughs> with the titles yeah. and earn it. Yes. Work your ass off, and when you get there, you'll understand where we're coming from. Yep. Uh, we're releasing a PSA <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> Everybody wants to go. Once you get there, so once you're a business owner, right? Yeah. Now what, Trace? Now what do you get to do? You get to sweep the floors. Yeah. You get to do accounting. You get to do payroll. You get to do all the yeah. inventory. You get to do all the fun taxes. You get to do all the city yeah. stuff. So no joke, like I look like this right now with, you know, my little jacket draped over me and my makeup on. But just an hour before I was chopping, you know, a case of cucumbers, uh, sweeping the floors. I did a few dishes. I was I helped customers. That is. And now guess what I have to do afterwards? I have a few meetings. I have to do payroll. Uh, I have to schedule like it's not fun it's not glamorous like my days are 18 hour days as I'm sure you know, you know? I, I, I still I still do heavy fun. days too <laughs> um, but there's a fulfillment let's not let's yes. not throw everybody off on like the whole entrepreneur thing there's a fulfillment when yeah. you take your concept to fruition and you're honest about the food that you make yeah okay so I would like to tell a lot of chefs eat your own food yeah. And ask yourself, honestly, are you willing to pay for that? Or are you making stuff that's trendy mm -hmm. with mommy and daddy's money <laughs> that in three months when you shut down because you didn't have your P&L yeah. set up, and your, your, your pay, profit and loss set up, you yeah. didn't know your cash flow. Yeah. You turn it into a, a boba shop, a pokey shop, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You don't have what it takes to build it. Mm -hmm. so before you do it, build the foundation. Yeah. Let's talk about the food because that is part of the whole entire show here. <laughs> All right, so your chicken thighs, which I really like, are boneless. They're are, they're super they're super marinated. Um, I think you did a great job. Did you have the garlic rice? Uh, I did. I picked a little bit on the bottom. Okay. Um, I think it's very uh, so. Soft the garlic rice. It is very floral. It has a, it has a lot of perfumey essence to it. Your chicken is beyond 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 good. I Thank could you. literally just put that in my pocket right now for later. <laughs> Your daikon, your, your pickled carrot is great. I, I think it's, it has great crunch to it. Has, wow. has, you, you really focused on what every part of 
this bowl is. It is all of the components coming into one to create a symphony, a harmonious, <laughs> our harmonious uh, orchestra of, of sounds and flavors. The, I think what, what really threw me off was the uh, pickled red cabbage. Okay. But I gotta say, that's my favorite part of this bowl. Although the rice is great, and although the chicken great is great, this pickled red cabbage is sweet, it's acidic, it has a great crunch. Uh -huh. It hasn't been sitting in vinegar for six months, so it still, has, it still holds its body. This together as a, a, a bowl, no matter how much you sell it for, this is honesty. This is something like I said doesn't come out of a of, of a um, of a jar. Mm -hmm. You can't just go and get these ingredients. Um, I can't get it delivered to you. What I'm trying to say is that you just can't go to the shelf and get this. Oh. Yeah, you like you can't go to 99 Ranch. Right? Yes, I got a better one. Everything that I've tasted thus far in this first bowl, there's no preservatives besides vinegar. That, that that's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's, I, I can look in the bowl and know everything that's in there. And that's important right now with food. Mm -hmm. It's understanding what, is actually, what it is you're actually eating. And for us restaurateurs and us chefs, it's important to be honest yeah. with our products and say, hey, you know, open kitchen means you can see every, everything you want. Mm -hmm. what means, means we're not hiding anything. Yeah. And it means, hey, we're trying to invite you into, to, into, our, into our lives here. Right. Everything in here is fresh. It is balanced. I really like the textures. The flavors are really good. I'll move over to Yibuti Noom. Okay. And then we can talk a little bit more about what happened when COVID happened. Ah, yes. Okay, COVID so co was fun. So the COVID happens, and then what? Um, so we opened uh, Mi Lai on February 3rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, obviously we had no idea that this was going to happen. And um, I was telling Calvin earlier that, you know, we had SARS and pig flu and all kinds of, you know, diseases before. And it lasts, you know, it's a sensation for two weeks and then it dies off and then that's it. Um, so when March 16th stay at home orders happened here in Los Angeles, uh, we were shitting ourselves. Um, my husband and I had dumped all of our savings into this project to make it a sensation. And, um, you know, we own a house, we have, well, you know, we have this lease. Uh, we were shitting ourselves. We didn't have a safety net. We don't have rich mommies and daddies to go back on. Uh, we put all of our love and hard work into this ourselves. Um, on top of the fact that we had just hired 12 uh, people mm -hmm. that are dependent on a job and not dependent for their to raise their families and money and all that stuff and we had to furlough everyone and I my husband and I came here every single day night and day and worked ourselves um, and it was tough I mean there's there were so many nights where we would just get drunk here people would come in I'd be like drunk on whiskey, making a mama mize bowl. <laughs> not a, not, not a bad gonna, way to spend a night, actually. Not gonna lie, <laughs> we had a, we a couple of our girlfriends or you know friends would come in and help us just to kind of break up the monotony, and we would there was a lot of drinking, lots, lots and lots of drinking. I think through any pandemic. So. You should always drink. Yeah. Always drink good whiskey. Yeah. And good whiskey, too. Oh, we was, always yeah, drink good whiskey. We, so we, Life uh, is too short to drink yeah, good whiskey. Yeah, my husband <laughs> likes the Nika coffee. So we mm, drink I love Nika coffee. That. Yeah, that's I love Nika favorite. coffee. I had a Yamazaki 21 in mm. uh, the Bay Area. And mm. I thought that was really good. Yeah, that's good, too. Uh, Butidung, it is a dish that I probably eat four times a week. It is rice noodles. It is uh, grilled pork. And you use the shoulder or do you use the belly? Shoulder good because mm -hmm. in the shoulder it has a lot of a connected tissues that gives you a nice uh, chewiness to it but it has a nice marbling of fat that goes through it so you get the, the top cap that has a nice fat rind and then you have fat that runs, runs through it and when you bite into this pork mm -hmm. this is grilled pork this is grilled on open fire I can taste the smoke yeah. and smoke equals flavor I don't care <laughs> how else no George Foreman grill <laughs> it's going to get you this texture and this flavor. And we don't air fry. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what that I, I, I've been in Asia 12, 12 years. That I think got, it's gotten out there, but, but yeah. I don't understand the whole air frying. No, I think most chefs don't. Like my husband is yeah. a chef. 
He's like, what the fuck is air fryer? It's a convection oven, people. Yeah. It's just some really good marketers. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> he said there's going to be air circling around things, and it makes things crispy. So it yeah. makes it seem like it's frying. Yeah. You cannot create the same textures and flavors in an air fryer. There are some good uses for it. Uh, yeah. I'd love to throw a roasted chicken in there, and in 40 minutes, we're good to go. Yeah. Butterfly it out. But... You can't get smokiness. And this dish in Vietnam, and I don't know if you've ever been here before. I have. Okay, so in, uh, in District 1, there's a place called Chi uh, Thom on Go Yang Go Bak. And she sells, I think, like, I want to say like 600 bowls a day. Wow. And Amazing. the secret of her, I mean, it is everything. But it's that, it's that barbecue. It's that, you know, the, the Mexicans have barbacoa, right? They have yep. the smoked low and slow. This is not low and slow. This is fast, high heat, heavily marinated. Yeah. But you taste the sugars. You taste the caramelization. You taste the soy. You taste everything about it. This is really good. And I don't have to even eat all of it because I've been eating this for the last 12 years. But <laughs> all I want to do is eat that pork and see how much of the fat did you leave on. Yeah. You know, because you want fat. I, yes. if, if you are... Vietnamese food has the, the lowest calories yeah. and the lowest amount of saturated fats you'll ever have in... Oh, no, Japanese is pretty... Uh, Jap yeah, yeah, Japanese. So let's say we're top 10. Yeah. Top 10? <laughs> top, top 10 in Asia. Let's say top 5. Top 5 in Asia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so what that in... <laughs> what was that? It's a, a, a car. Oh. Like a, you know, like a Fast and Furious car. Oh, yeah. sorry. Because <laughs> we don't edit this, so this is going to come on to the video. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to try the pork, and I, I just want to see how much did you trim off. Is this, you know, really good quality pork? And it is. And then, did you cheat by throwing it in the oven, or did you really grill it on the open grill and get no. and get that flavor? So, uh, no, we do not cheat by throwing it in the oven. We we op we uh, we put it on the grill, open fire. Mm. Um, we oh. slice it first before we marinate it. And, also, this um, light sucks, but this is this is a beautiful bowl. <laughs> Of course, we have to trim off some of the fat, but we try to leave enough on to make sure that it's um, tender, that the caramelization, uh, that you can taste the caramelization. Because again, you know, everyone hates on fat, but who fat hates on is fat? Flavor. Who hates on fat? Look at how much I have. A, I've a been storing this. Venice. Really? <laughs> I've been storing I'm this for like number of years that I'm married. I get to store this. Me too. I have to drink my jacket over so I can cover my fatty <laughs> All right. arms. Uh, watermelon and radish, uh, maybe you do know or you don't know, but if you know, you know, watermelon and radish is the most prettiest thing yep. uh, that you can so put on a plate. The reason why we have it is because we, in uh, you know, our spring rolls, actually, mm -hmm. I should have had to make this. Instead of, we don't put shrimp, we don't use shrimp. Mm -hmm. So we put watermelon and radish in the spring rolls and roll it up so that that's the color on the outside. Pretty. So it makes a beautiful, Pretty. and then you get the, that lovely crunch. Um, so it's uh, that, you know, that nice texture and that that beauty. That's true, Lauren. Oh boy. Watermelon rash is not cheap. I promise you that right now. It, it is not. It but, is to, not. But, but to, you know, bring it into your food, you know, you, we eat with your eyes and, yeah. you know, we gotta remember that food is something that, that, that brings in love. You wanna answer that? Go ahead. Um, I can't, well, hold on. Let me just run in there and tell them that, can I just give me Go. two I wanna, seconds? Go, I wanna keep talking while, while, while you're gone. Two seconds. Um, I really do appreciate Tracy reaching out because I don't get a chance to talk about entrepreneurship uh, with a first time female uh, restaurant owner who, you know, has, she didn't start in culinary, she didn't go to school, and she's back. I'm but, back. I didn't want to get a parking ticket. Oh, good yeah. one. Neither do I. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to see her build her dream out, to work for it, it means everything. And do kudos to you. Thank you. So that thing is behind me, and and trust me, I will. I, oh, oh my boy. god, this thing is gigantic. Yeah. I mean, my forearm is this big, yeah. and your behind me is this big. Well, you know, it's it is our behind me is a little bit pricier than you, what you would find in Orange County. Um, How much is it in Orange County? It's like three, four dollars in Orange County. So ours is pretty much like double that. But we try to Yours give you eight dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah. But look so, at this thing. Yes, we and try to give you good value for what you're paying for. bread, yes. right? You got really good quality pork. Your vegetables are beyond beyond fresh, and if you are willing to spend ten dollars at Burger King, because that's what it costs now. 
thought what? Chicken, yeah, I know. No. I just did a show with the uh, with, my, with my friend Sunny, and called the Best Ever Food Review Show. We did a uh, chicken sandwich challenge. Okay. And chicken sandwiches right now at Burger King, or or Popeyes, etc. It's like seven, eight dollars, dude. Wow. Not cheap. All right, I'm gonna go for a bite, and then uh, I don't know where I start. This thing so good. <laughs> I know it's, we should add them cut it in half for you. Oh, oh God. <laughs> mm. Did you get some uh, mm. mayo in there? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. good. Mayo. Oh, my God. It's mayo, Miracle Whip, or do you take egg whites or egg yolks and make your own mayo? Okay, so we have a secret. We don't do any of that. Oh. We cheat. How? Because we want to expand this, mm. so it has to be good and consistent. We use QP mayo. Love QP mayo. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't and know, we season it. Mm. So do I. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. For those who don't know, mayo, it's a Japanese mayo that's creamy. It's a little bit sweeter, mm -hmm. but it has a it has a balance that it's not so heavy on your palate. Yeah. Um, and yes, I season my kipi mayo also to make a roasted soy mayonnaise, roasted, roasted garlic soy mayonnaise, and I slide that shit on everything. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, can you buy QP in like the big three three kilos? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. I like so, it. So you know, when we were, when when I was doing these recipes, and you know, my husband, he's a he's a chef, chef, and I went to culinary school. Uh, you know, he kept saying, you have to think about you. You want to expand this. How do you expand this? You're not gonna sit there and whip. You're not. Consistency you know, you're is key. You're not gonna key. do that. It's not gonna be consistent. Yeah. So. Um, we thought of QP mayo, so we took it, tried it, seasoned it, and it was perfect. It's the, that thickness that Vietnamese mayo has. It's everything. It, it's really good. I, I, I think, you know, out of everything that we've eaten today, and although I didn't eat much, I just need to know flavors. Yeah. And, you know, if I had to pick the best one out of everything, the chicken and rice was absolutely phenomenal. I, again, the, the crunch and the flavors, and the savory and the sweetness really play well with each other. And then fried shallots. It makes yeah. everything aromatic. I know, I love it. Yeah. They're my favorite. But don't sleep on this sauce. This you sauce, love it? yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's a, one of our, uh, of course, the- <laughs> What, Do Of course, the, I, the, the fish sauce I'm, or the my lai sauce and the cilantro gingers are I'm trying to two get, favorites I'm, I'm here. To, this mm -hmm. is like Odu Milano. You know this. So, you know this uh, well, you, of course you know. How do I know? Some people There's, have that what? that that uh, gene where cilantro tastes like soap to them. Oh, I know. I know. And some. What a shame. I know. I I know. I, we can't we can't shame people because then we'll <laughs> then I get cancel cultured. That's that is true. No, we're not saying. I'm just saying that it's a shame that they don't taste the cilantro we taste. That's right. They they can't That's experience so. uh, yeah. all the. Um, regalness uh, yeah. that, yeah. that that cilantro is. And you know, it, it is that they, they, they say that uh, it tastes like uh, soap. They soap. say it tastes like soap. Right? And it's, it's a bummer. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, yes. But cilantro is a big, heavy uh, part of our cooking. Uh, I don't yes. know how it got into Vietnam, uh, nor do I really care. But I know that it is, it is, <laughs> it is something that it got, because you know, we're French influence, right? Yes, yes. I don't think cilantro is French. It, I feel like it would maybe Thai, the, through, the, through Thai, through Thailand. If you know the answer to this, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> I'll have Tracy shout you out on her yeah. future video with us we'll because do she's it. done so good today. You done thank excellent. You. Well, thank you. You literally care this whole this whole interview. I, did, oh, I said very little. Lies. Okay. I just love to talk. There's seven minutes left, okay. and I need one minute just for myself to do an outro. Yep. What do you want to tell uh, female entrepreneurs, female uh, females out there who say I want to start something that's my own? I want to have ownership. What tips or advice would you give somebody out there watching in 2022? So we're yeah. two and a half months out into the in, into the new year. What are three things you would tell uh, young women or even older women in general who want to be business owners? Go ahead. What would I say? I would say first of all, <coughs> sorry, um, <coughs> you, you're good. I'm good. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to get. Um, you got to. You know, he Calvin was talking about self worth, self worth, and. Uh, learning about yourself, getting to know yourself, right? What do you love? What uh, is authentically you? Uh, that is number one. Um, if you don't, if you don't have something, if you don't like something, if you don't care about something so much, where you're willing to sacrifice everything mm. for it, then uh, that that 
don't even bother don't because it's it's hard business is hard putting yourself on the line is hard um can i step in real quick yes may i yes of course Thanks, do what you're good at not what you love but well, you have to be good at it once you're good at it you master it you will learn to love what you're great I at. I don't know. I think that you have to love it and be good at it both. If you I love cooking, with you. if you love to cook, yes. make it your job. Yeah. Do it every day, 70 hours a week for five years. Okay. And ask yourself, do I still love it or not? If you're a home cook and you have a hobby, yeah. it's well, a great no. hobby. Yes, but I think there has to be like, you know, you have to. I disagree. I feel like good. you I have love to, to disagree. love it. I love to disagree. Yes. You, you have it. to be good at it. Absolutely. Yes. In order to put that investment into it. Right. But you also have to love it because you were doing, you were doing this all day long. Let me rephrase that. I don't that do anything else but sling and roll. <laughs> let me rephrase that. And, and, and let me, okay. Hold on. So a lot of the youth right now come to me and say, uh, I want to be, uh, or I, I want to be something, right? And I and and the, I'm like, are you any good at what what you want to do? And they're like, no, I'm not. But I want to do it because I think I I think I'm gonna love it. And I always tell them, find out what you're really good at. Do that. Yeah. Because if you're the very best at what you do, you can really make waves in your industry. Yeah, we can I agree mean, and disagree. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if I fully agree. I would say that. And, and I don't feel like I fully agree with myself either. Maybe we partially agree. <laughs> but the point I is. I do partially <clears throat> agree okay. with you. I and partially I, agree. I think I partially agree with myself yeah. too. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Um, you got you to gotta have some sort of business sense. Yes. I, I don't know <coughs> if it's, you know, and common sense. I don't know if it's taking a class or, or reading or maybe taking a master class or something like that, mm -hmm. but you have to have some sort of business sense, right? You got to learn how to read your P&Ls. You got to uh, understand what your labor costs are, your percent, your food costs are. Uh, all of that has to be kept low and in control. Um, and by doing so, you take the cheapest ingredients and you make magic out of them. Yes. Right? Yes. You, you take carrots and daikons. That yes. is pennies on the yes. dollar per pound and you make something magical out of it. Yes. Yes. This leads me to my next point. Oh. You cannot be lazy. Oh. It takes hard work. <laughs> it does. And part of part of number 2, uh, learning your costs, learning how much it is, is uh, learning the best way to get to that, right? Into that to that in part. You can't like I have a small business. I cannot go or call Cisco or worldwide produce or whatever mm -hmm. and say I need XYZ delivered to me mm -hmm. because they're going to charge me three, four times what it would cost for me or my husband to go and buy it at the restaurant suppliers, right? Yes. So we go and we shop for ourselves. Mm -hmm. There are, we are starting to get to where we, um, you know, are doing well enough where we can have some things delivered, but not all. So lazy, you know, if you want to be lazy and you have mom and dad's money, then you're gonna you're gonna kill it all. <laughs> I swear, this this whole conversation is two forty year olds talking so much smack to you young kids about what it really means to be a business owner. But I hope that it gets yeah. into people's minds because you need capital expenditure. You need cap X. You yes. need a a a a good amount of money mm -hmm. to start a business. Yeah. Not everything. But you can't expect to make all your money back within th uh, six to twelve weeks. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, exactly. And part of don't be lazy is you know it's not just like oh I'm you know I'm at a party and I own a business. Mm -mm -mm. No, it's getting up that next day while you're hungover and going to work your ass off. You, you know it so well, right? And <laughs> yes. I know it so well too. I do. <laughs> okay, we've got two minutes left. I'll do a quick outro. Yes. Thank you so much to me, Lai. Thank you so much to Tracy to reaching out to us and having us here today. I promise you all this food is going to be going right into my stomach uh, after the show ends. If you enjoyed the video that you, watch, that you just watched, there is a link in my description below for my Venmo and PayPal. Consider pledging uh, $1, $2, $5, $10. It's $10, right? Mm -hmm. $10 to buy me spend me. It helps me continue my journey around the U.S. and possibly the world to tell stories about the small businesses that make up the community. Mm -hmm. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment. We want to know your comments. We want to know what you want to know more about. 
It's a minute left. Good. Uh, if there's any entrepreneurial questions that you want to ask me or Tracy, leave in the comments. One of us will get back to you. It really is about giving back. Yes. Right? It, it, Absolutely. At this point in our career, it's all about that. giving back yeah. to everybody else. There's no need to hold on anymore to the information. If we don't answer it, Google will. Yeah. And if you can't find the answer, Google has everything for you. Yeah. It does. I Google everything. Google everything. The one thing everything. that you guys can do to yeah. really make a difference is go out there and support small business. Get off your ass. Don't do DoorDash. Don't do Grubhub. Don't do Uber Eats. Go down here and eat. See the owners. Say hi. They're tangible people. <laughs> That's what we live for. We live for the experience. The food's never gonna be the exact same way if you get it delivered. Yeah. But when you see us and something goes wrong, we can fix it. Not Paul, the uh, 21 year old door dasher. I just made that name up. <laughs> my name is Calvin Bowie, AKA Captain Charisma. This is my girl. Tracy. And we will yeah. see, oh, well, we will see you later. <laughs> That's, that was.